So that's pretty relaxing, right? I don't know. There's something about it. I, it's not. It's one of those things where I didn't set out to make it. Um, I was going for like a super photorealistic uh, ocean because with Redshift, I always try to do everything photorealistic. And sometimes I forget um, happy little accidents happen. And uh, we kind of have this weird hybrid of in between realistic and kind of Studio Ghibli anime style because of the when I added the white stuff on there that. OK, so we're going to talk about creating this and besides the fact that it just looks pretty cool because you see it has like reflections and stuff on it and a nice bump but it actually loops uh really well which is really important to me i think like creating stuff like this is really nice to have like this nice background loop uh it's jumping because by the way if you don't know this uh when you set stuff in your timeline this is the first quick tip of this tutorial uh when you set stuff in your timeline if it's like you have it set by all frames by default, you know, and hit play and it goes from one from two. And it's just like basically in slow motion and you have no idea what it actually is going to look like sped up. Uh, so that's where when you click and hold right here, you can uncheck all frames and just set the frame rate you want. And then it'll just like frame skip to do that frame rate. So it'll play as many frames as it can to get that frame rate. But so you can kind of get the gist of how it's actually going to be moving. Because it's really easy when you're doing like noises and stuff like that. That things are like you, you're playing it in slow and you're like, oh, yeah, that's going to look good. And then you render it out and it's like, you know, and it's, it's nuts. All right, so let's talk about creating this kind of fun, cool look. I have all these wood things in there because I added the pirate ship, um, but it didn't look right. Like something about the anime style of this uh, feels like I should add like a trolley or something instead of like a boat or maybe something like floating. I don't know. I tried some different backgrounds and stuff. It was pretty cool. But uh, this is one of those things that uh, I set out because it's just kind of one of those things that uh, c 4 ds always kind of been missing for whatever reason they don't have like an ocean deformer which seems like something you should be able to get pretty easy like blender has one where you go click and you say ocean and it literally just makes it hello welcome to derek's first blender tutorial we're gonna go ahead and hit x on this to delete this cube then go up here to add mesh plane inside of this plane we're gonna go down here to this little wrench we're gonna say add modifier add modifier we're gonna go down to ocean boom there we go now we've got a nice ocean here and so all we need to do is we've got some wave controls here we can adjust the scale of these waves uh, maybe the smallest waves a little bitty let's find some choppiness in there not too much because we'll get some weird clipping Wind velocity, alignment, all that sounds pretty good. So now all we need to do is animate the time on this. And look at that. We've got this really nice ocean. Just like that. Okay, C4D. <clears throat> Man. That was weird. That was like some alternate universe where I teach Blender. But well, it was really like calm and boring and English about it. <laughs> <laughs> don't know why anyway uh, blender does some cool things that are cool so i mean you can obviously export that out of blender if you want as an olympic or um yeah so then take that in here so if you like the way that looks you can do that but there's a pretty fun way to do it inside of c4d as well uh so that's what we're gonna do now so let's get, get back to the tutorial and like basically you know if we turn all this off right and we add a landscape okay and we uncheck borders at sea level like that is like a perfect ocean like just give me this and the ability to you know offset the noise like animate the noise that's being generated in this and then boom you've got an ocean like that's literally it it's right there just let me do it um so if you can figure out a way to to do that let me know because there's no like uh there's just sea here because uh, you can really make it an ocean very quickly and easily with that you get all these furrows you know, and then lower it down, right? And doesn't that look like just like an ocean? And if I could just animate that slowly rather than jumping seeds around, that, that's perfect. Like it's all there. I know it's being made with noises, so come on. Anyway, that's what I'm, that's, I'm talking to you, Maxon. Okay, if anyone has uh, a word with Maxon, let me know. So let's go ahead and talk about cre actually creating this because what really makes this look so cool is that the texture on it because without that you know it looks kind of lame not lame it's pretty cool still but it's not near as cool right so beautiful cool like it looks like water colored right total accident but i can recreate it and that's uh, the beauty of it let's go ahead and turn off our bloom and stuff like that so we can all be on the same page there we go and you see by default it looks 
not bad, right? It's not t terrible. So one thing I wanted to make sure that I captured with these waves is kind of those like weird peaks that they that they get, you know. So uh, and I didn't want it to like be just like all round. Like a lot of times when you look at the, like good open ocean water sims and stuff, they have these nice peaks that are like kind of moving uh, just around a little bit. So you can kind of get the sense of how I created this. And you can see if we change the angle, it's kind of squished down. And we'll talk about all of that from there. But, you know, it doesn't It looks strange, right? So let's just talk about creating this and the kind of the approach to it and that kind of thing. And so it'll be pretty quick and easy one, but maybe you'll learn something along the way because uh, I didn't even know how to do it before I did it. So here we go. All right, so first things first, let's just go ahead and we'll turn all this off so we have it for reference, right? Uh, but let's go ahead and I just have a dome light and for my dome light, I have it set to be uh, the desert one, which is in the, uh, you just go under here and you type in HDRI and it's the desert one right there. You just click and drag that over. It's a very nice one. Good, even sunset. I like the ones with blurry horizons because uh, I don't want to have to worry about tilting it and stuff and having like weird trees in the background and stuff like that. I just I just want less work, so just give me that. Uh, and then I have a big old area light over here off to the side because I like area lights more than infinite lights most of the time. Uh, it's pretty much choked down to be an area light. I mean, an infinite light, so it's got no spread. But for whatever reason, I just think they're easier to control. And I like the fact that if I want to, I can throw a gobo on it. And then I can have like make it look like it's a cloudy day just by throwing a gobo on that light. So that's pretty cool. All right, so let's go ahead and just create a plane. And obviously, we need to be bigger. So I have a preset here set to big O. Uh, so that's what we do. Uh, but basically, we can actually chop that down. And if you don't have a preset, basically, you just type in 4,000 by 4,000. And let's go ahead and crank this up to 1,000 by 1,000. And you may say, well, that's going to be way too heavy on my on my machine. Um, it's not really. Like, C40 can handle it now. And if you are worried about it, cut it in half. Start there and then work your way up. Like, build lower and work your way up if you want to. And just see where it breaks. But save along the way if you're worried about that. Um, so we've got this. And if you're curious about how to like save that preset and create that, you just type in what you want. And then you click this little arrow and you go down and you say save preset. And then you can label it whatever you want. Um, and then there you go. So then next time you make a plane, uh, you can actually just pull this down, drop it down, and it'll be right there to select, which is pretty cool. And if you want it to be like the default one, so whenever you click a plane, it's just going to be there. You just say... Uh, uh, when you're going to save, you can just check this little box right here, save as default. So whenever you click a plane, it's going to be that. So you want to tweak it. So if you do something a lot like that, uh, really good tip to uh, create that kind of effect or like save some, save yourself some time. Okay, so we've got our plane here. So what we're going to do is, as you can see here, uh, we're going to throw a displacer on there. So we're going to click oh, shift and hold shift while we let go on displacer. There we go. And nothing's going to happen. We have to go into the shading. And instead of shading, we go to shader. And instead of shader, we go to noise. All right. Uh, there we go. We've, we're done. Uh, no, but we're going to go in here and to noise. And we're going to choose our noise pattern. If you don't like choosing like this, by the way, uh, you can click this little arrow right here. And you can actually see like an image of what they are. And you have to hover over them to see what they're called. But it can kind of help you remember what they are. Um, but... Again, it's kind of, it's interesting. So the one we want to use, because uh, I was looking at all these and like, you know, you look at these and you're like, well, it looks like an ocean, right? And you're like, oh, well, maybe, I don't know, maybe turbulence or wavy turbulence, right? Stands out. But when you do that one, um, it just doesn't quite feel right. And we're going to need to make this way bigger. So we'll do like a thousand uh, here in the global space. That's going to scale everything up. And it's like, Okay, right, and we can come in here to our displacer object and increase the intensity of this up. And it just doesn't feel right. Like you would think wavy turbulence would be it, but what we're actually going to do is instead of a noise, instead of wavy turbulence, we're going to use Voronoi, which when we do that, you're like, oh, isn't that the one that's like all weird cells? But when you actually plug it in with that nice softness that it has built in, you can kind of see how that's going to work, right? But like on its own, it looks silly, but like, you get down low, hey, not too shabby. Whoopsies. Uh, <laughs> got clumsy fat fingers, uh, gamer hands. All right, so we've got, uh, you can tell, this is kind of, 
you can kind of see how this is going to work. Obviously, we need to add more detail and stuff on here, but for the base animation of the way our waves are going to look and, and wave, uh, we're going to use this, right? So we're going to go ahead and if you're going to do something like real big and tile it a bunch or anything, you want to change off the space and set it to world. And that's going to just allow it to be like across the whole scene. So you're not going to have like repeating tiles. Uh, so that's a really good uh, thing to do if we want, but we don't need to do that for this. Um, but we're just going to keep cranking this up and we're going to get it cranked up until we kind of get it's spaced out a bit. It looks a little more calm, like, right? And so we're going to take off the shading, uh, the lines here, because it's just getting kind of hard to look at. Uh, but we kind of get the idea of how this is going to work. Now, it doesn't look super oceany yet, uh, but we're going to come out right here and we're going to go into the object and we're just going to crank it up, crank it up, crank it up. So you can kind of see we're getting a little jagged bits here, and that's just because of the lack of enough geometry. So when you start seeing that, that means like basically you don't have enough geometry. We'll switch to the shaded lines. You can see you've got kind of big squares here. And when they kind of do these little sharp little points and these tiny little details like that, they're not going to work that well. So that's where we need to come in here to our plane and up this back up to a thousand and a thousand. And that's going to basically double everything, which just makes it look a little bit cleaner. But you'll be able to tell that it's still not perfect, but it's going to be much better. And we'll fix that here in a minute. So the only thing I want to do is I want to come in here and I just want to scale this up uh, a little bit more. So my shading, my noise, I want to say just 2000 here. And then for this, I like that, but I want like waves to be more stretched out. So I'm going to grab it in the X and scale that up like maybe 500. So now that it's just kind of like fatter, right? And then we can kind of play around with this. And we can see if we stretch that out, it's not going to do much, right? But if we stretch this out, it's going to spread those out a little bit. So it's just kind of like maybe 200. And I know this, like, you could do a fraction where you do these less, but it's just the way it's working. But there we go. So now we kind of have nicer little pockets. Maybe 500 is a little much, but we'll, we'll do 350. And maybe that's better. Yeah. So that's not bad. Uh, but I do want it to be a little higher. Uh, let's see if, uh, let's blur this like 20%. It's not going to do much, if anything, but it might help smooth some things out. Uh, but let's go ahead and crank this up a little bit more. So we have some nice, good, like, water. Like, have you ever seen a Sea of Thieves? Sea of Thieves water looks so good in a video game. It's an old game, but it still holds up. And uh, it's coming to PS5 now. Wow. Uh, it's coming to PlayStation. Anyway, that's a whole thing. Um, I love gamer talk. If anyone wants to talk games with me. Let me know. Hit me up in the Discord. I could talk games all day. But the reason I mentioned that is because it's really pretty. It's not like realistic, but it just looks good. And so that's kind of what I wanted to create. And it has these nice stiff peaks and stuff. And I, I like the way this is looking. But obviously, this doesn't look like water. And you may think, okay, so now you just throw a bum map on this and it's going to look more like waves. Well, I, we actually need to do a little bit more. First thing we need to do is make this loop because it's really important to me to make this loop. I don't know why. I just love loops. But what we're going to do, and it's like one of the strengths of C4D, right? Animation. So we're going to come in here to the noise. And in order to make this loop, we come down here, we have animation speed and loop period. Now, for the longest time, these confused the crap out of me because nothing made sense. Um, like if you right click, and you go to help, it's like, okay, it pops up the redshift help. Uh, loop period is, you know, with the exception of these few types, wavy turbulence being one, uh, they won't loop. So you, it says the, it will loop the noise in accordance with the time in seconds, not frames, which is important because everything else in C40 that you type in that has anything to do with animation is frame based. But for whatever reason, loops are seconds based. Okay, first thing to keep in mind. It says it must not be set to zero. Its value of zero will turn this effect off. Uh, so there's that. And animation speed will do the uh, speed at which it animates. Right. Okay, so not super clear what's going to be happening. And it sucks that there's no, like, visual. I can't, like, say, throw this on the object, right? Like I can with the material. Um, but let's just go ahead and see if I type in, you know, one speed here and I hit play it's gonna go right okay so you can see you know it's playing but it's not looping right so because we don't have a loop period so we're gonna say zero even though it told us not to do 
zero because the animation speed of a noise like what it, what is that right um it's going to be moving that noise around but if we loop it uh, and we just say seconds right so for the longest time i was like okay i want it to loop once i'm like wait that's not right and that's 300 frames long so 300 not right seconds okay so if we have 300 frames in our timeline and our frame rate is 30 frames per second that's 10 seconds okay loop period of 10 it's set to zero we're gonna hit play nothing's gonna happen okay good right so it didn't work but here's the weird part if we look back at my original one that was working uh noise animation speed zero so we're going to trick it, okay? So we're going to come in here to our displacement on our plane, and we're going over here to the noise. And we're going to do an animation speed of one. And when we look at this, you can see it's just, it's too fast, right? Like that's just, I don't want it to be moving that much. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in point zero 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 one, right? Just a bunch of zeros and a one. Hit enter. It's going to work. It's going to make it as close to zero as possible, so close to zero that it tells you it's zero. And you can't even like click it and, and select what you've typed in. But we're going to hit play, and you can see it works. And we have a much nicer speed. This is playing back like not every frame, but in real time. So this is what it's going to look like. You know, so we kind of have this vibe and you kind of see it looks pretty good. Like it's kind of a neat effect, like by itself, it looks kind of weird and geometric, but it's kind of a cool stylized vibe, right? Uh, so I'm pretty happy with the way that is the fact that it says zero here. I don't know. We're, we're getting it as close to zero as possible to get the speed we want because we want it to be low, but we want it to loop. So our loop period needs to be the number of seconds in our whole animation, right? Uh, for To make it as short as possible. Now, if we wanted it to loop more, it's obviously gonna go faster, right? So as much time as we can give it to loop, the slower it's gonna be. And this is obviously as slow as we can make it go. Uh, so that's why I did 300 frames, okay? So that's good because now when we come to frame 300 and we go back to frame zero, they're gonna look exactly the same. So that's how you know it's looping. So now if you want to actually loop when it comes to render time, what you're going to do is you can come over here to the bottom and say click and make it 299. Because otherwise, you're going to have two frames back to back that are identical. Frame 0 and frame 300 are going to be the same. And that's not what you want. So you're going to go ahead and tick that back. So now it's going to go from the frame right before the frame that's the same. So when you put that in an editor back to back, right? So you have your frame 0 should follow frame 299 like that. Boom. Boom, 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 boom. And so they'll never have those two frames lining up. So you'll have a smooth loop. Uh, it drives me crazy when I see a bunch of loops and stuff where there's that split little second where it uh, hiccups. And that's that's what that's from. You just need to delete one of your frames. Okay. Whew. So now we've got that going. Let's just literally uh, grab control on this and drag it down and add another displacer. Boom. It's going to get crazy, right? So obviously what we need to do is tweak this one uh, so that it isn't, you know, identical and we want it to be smaller. And we want this one to create the tiny little imperfections uh, across our water. Not super small, but just enough to make it a little variant. So then we can use the bump map to do those super small details because that's going to be easier on your computer. Okay. So displacement noise All right inside of that noise uh we are going to change it from voronoi to blistered turbulence there we go but you can see that's like kind of overriding everything but you can see it kind of has these nice vibes uh let's scale it down a little bit maybe like 500 okay and uh, we'll take this one down to 100 and just so we kind of have more of a horizontal loop and it's just this too much going on right now so let's grab it and go to our object and one we're going to lower the height of that down because we don't need it to offset everything that much okay like maybe 50 centimeters so we kind of have the combination of the two a little bit but it's still too intense so we're going to dial that one back because they're competing for each other we don't really want that so we're going to dial it back to like maybe 60 percent and now you see we have like nice little wavy details and the waves. And when we hit play, it's still going to loop because they're both set to loop 
if they're identical, uh, they're just going to be different. Blister turbulence is one of the loops. But now we just have to worry about these weird little lines. Now, there's a couple things we could do. We could subdivide this. I don't think we need to. We're already at 1,000 by 1,000. I don't want to subdivide it further and freeze our machine up. So first things I'm going to do is save. Okay. And we might could spread out our waves. Totally up to you. Choice. Save. Okay. Ocean. And what I want to do is just grab right here and hold shift and add a smoother. And I actually don't want it to be underneath it. I want it to be inside the plane. So I'm just going to put it underneath the stack there. And you can see that that instantly smooths out everything. So smoother is really cool. because It's kind of like a super fong tag uh, where it doesn't actually add any geometry. It just makes it look like you did. It's kind of wild. Uh, so what we want to do is actually bring that strength down because we are losing a lot of that detail. So you want to find that balance between like maybe a little bit of that detail and you can, uh, you know, increase the stiffness, lower the stiffness which is going to get you more of that detail and that kind of thing. Um, but we just want to go somewhere in between. It doesn't have to be perfect, but we want it to be pretty, pretty good. So that's, that's pretty good, right? We still have detail from our one noise and we still have the overall big noise. I'm pretty happy with the way this is looking. Uh, so now what we can do is uh, basically right click, add a render tag, add a redshift object tag, and on this tag, or the geometry tag, tab, turn on override, which this button shouldn't exist. Like just, these all have their own individual checkboxes anyway. Like get rid of that. Like I don't need an override tag. This is the, this is uh, getting on my soapbox now. When I bring in materials or anything for anything else that have redshift materials and they're, they have redshift displacement built in, nothing works, right? Even if it brings the redshift object tag in, the override tag is still always checked off. There's no way to like save that data in the material. That shouldn't be there. Like we don't need an override button on that because everything else is a checkbox. If those are those save, right? So if I bring in a material from Kitbash that has displacement, it lets me know if tessellation is on and displacement and like those are checked. So just get rid of the override button. I don't need that. Okay. Uh, I can turn these off if I want to. Anyway, what we're going to do is override, sorry, back to the tutorial. Uh, go in here and just turn on tessellation. And we're not going to see anything happen here. So I want to show you what this is going to be doing. So we're going to render this with it off first. So we have that for comparison. And you can see we've come a long way from that. Uh, and it's not bad, right? Like it actually comes out pretty clean. Now there's obviously with this white material, we're, we're getting pretty clean results, but that smoothing is working really well. And we still have this nice detail in here. It doesn't look like weird craters or anything anymore. But if we turn on tessellation, it's going to take a little bit longer because it's going to tessellate our object for us at render time. So we'll go ahead and refresh. And it should pop up down there that it's going to tessellate. There we go, it's forcing, forcing tessellation. And it's just going to make it even smoother, right? So it's basically like adding a subdivision surface at render time. So we can actually come back in here to the smoothing and maybe increase the stiffness a bit more so we get some of that detail to come back and lower the strength down to maybe even all the way down to 10. There we go. So now we have a lot more of that detail kind of come back, but we still have pretty smooth corners. They don't look smooth here, but if we look at them in our render, they do look smooth because we're basically throwing a subdivision on here afterwards. Uh, with that tessellation and we can maybe increase this up to like 20% and take this down to 60 because we don't need like that many de details, but that looks pretty good. So we have obvious displacement, big ripple waves. We're good to go, right? These are all those things like you get 90% of the way through your product and project and then you spend like an hour on the last little 2%. I know that math is good, um, but yeah. So let's go ahead and now we're ready to add that really cool shader. Uh, so we just grab that and we throw that on there and we are done. Check this out. Look at this. Now I'll show you how to make it. Don't worry. But I just want to show you what it's going to look like. Let's see if it comes out right. Ah, beautiful. It's like the, that Japanese painting that's like the one that's supposed to look better every time you see it. Uh, it's real famous. I can't forget. I can't remember what it's called. But that is cool, right? Instantly looks good. It's going to loop. All of our peaks are going to have this nice kind of subsurface divide on there. And we have like these nice ripply waves going on and we can control all of this. Okay. Uh, which is so cool. All right. So 
Now let's make that. So let's start with a new texture. We'll go ahead and grab that and throw that on there. And when I open this up, I have some of my favorite things in here. Uh, I show you how to set that up in the Mind in Motion workshop, uh, which, which if you don't know, is available uh, right now. So uh, the uh, basic tier is available all the time uh, where you go through on your own, whereas the uh, premium tier uh, has sessions and we're in the week five, or sorry, chapter four, week five of a session right now. It's going great. The students are blowing me away as always. And um, super cool to see everybody's renders be so different too. Uh, I really pride myself on teaching you how to make it your own. So everybody's reel is not going to look the same because that's like, I know a thing that people worry about with like school of motion and stuff because everybody's reel kind of looks the same. Um, somewhat, you know, but these, these look totally different, which is what's so cool about it. Okay. Uh, back to this. So we've got this created. Uh, let's go ahead. That's on our plane. That's good. Let's go ahead and open up our render view because I like to do that while I work. We'll hit play. We'll grab these little three lines and dock it over here on the side. There we go. So we can see it here while we work here. Okay. All right. So first things first is we probably want this to be a little blue, right? Uh, but I don't want it to be just blue, right? Like let's just, we could just say blue and like that's Pretty cool, but the ocean's not like just pure blue. There's kind of like some color variation and stuff. And this is kind of a good rule for most things um, organically in the world is you want to use like a ramp or a noise and just kind of give it some variation that's subtle, but there just to give it that little bit of extra oomph. Now you could leave it right here and that's kind of a cool little look. You could, you know, make it a little uh, metallic and then lower that reflection, crank that up and you have kind of this trippy, cool water, right? Not too bad, but let's go ahead and uh, reset all that stuff and uh, grab a noise and we can isolate that by clicking this little S here. Boop. With this noise isolated, you can kind of barely tell that it's doing anything. Uh, and that's because ever since 2024, all the noise scales got changed. Uh, so we have to come in here and scale it up. So we're going to go ahead and scale this up to about 250. And now we can kind of see that noise, right? And we're going to change it from noise and we're going to change it to turbulence. It's a very classic one. And we're going to come in here to the scale and let's just scale it up to like maybe three. Just to kind of spread that out so it looks kind of like um, more wavy in my mind. And that's really just based on the camera angle, which way you do that. Um, so we're looking at it this way. Okay, so if we want this to be more dramatic, because the way this is going to work is everything that's white is going to be lifted up higher than everything that's black. And if we actually want it to go up and down, we're going to go into our bump map, which if you don't have this here hooked up, uh, you hit C and you type in bump, bring that in and hook that into the bump map right here underneath the geometry tab. So we've got that here. And what I do is I set my minimum range by default. This is set to zero. And at the new minimum range, I set that to negative one. So rather than just zero uh, black values having nothing applied to them, they're actually going to go down one. And because it's a bump, it's not really down, but it's going to look like it's down, right? Uh, and that applies for displacement and stuff too, where it does actually suck it down. Uh, anyway, so let's grab this and we're just going to drag that in and see what that looks like if we turn that off. And you can kind of see it, but not much. So we're going to grab our bump and crank it up to three. It's as high as I would ever put a bump map. <clears throat> and now we kind of have a little more uh, variation. So let's come in here and just kind of raise up that low clip and bring down that high clip, which is kind of just like clamping it. So we're going to get a little more variation. And there we go. Now we have, uh, you know, because the bump map is faking it, but it looks like we have a lot more detail on this and you're going to see it the most when we start messing with the reflection uh, so we can crank our ior up to like 1.4 which is a good water ior but we can make our roughness really low uh, for our water to be shiny so you can see that as that light comes in uh, we're going to have this nice reflection now obviously if i turned and looked this way uh, our water is probably too squished together which you would just change the scale of the noise but because i'm setting my shot up for a certain shot doesn't matter. Uh, it looks good to me. So keep that in mind. But now we have this kind of like realistic reflection on the water with these nice details as well as these big details. It looks pretty good. Now it looks kind of wonky here, but that's because we're not setting it up for that. We're doing it for this shot. And uh, that's you know something to keep in mind. You can obviously just don't scale them that much and 
keep them more uniform, like, and they'll be more central, which should look better overall. But I liked how it looked uh, this way. It kind of felt like those old, um, I don't know why they're old, but uh, those things where you kind of have those cutouts of waves, that it, I don't know, it's like wooden animatronics, I guess is what they are, you know, it's like they just kind of do this. <laughs> I thought that was a really cool look, so they kind of gave me that vibe. All right, but let's go ahead and keep going. I know I keep going on off on these side tangents. It's just one of those days, you know. Uh, we're going to grab this, and we're going to go down here to the subsurface, and this is where all your dreams are going to come true, okay? We're going to grab this blue. Now, I talked about mixing colors, so I'm actually I'm going to hit C and type in max on and grab that max on noise, bring it in. With this selected, I'm going to go ahead and go with like FBM and I'm going to the input and I'm going to say about 300. Okay. I'll isolate that just so I can kind of see how it's going to look. I think it needs to be bigger. 800. And what I'm doing with this is creating just a slight discolorations in the water. Uh, so maybe 1200. Yeah, something like that. And we're just going to choose our colors here. You can do it through a ramp or you can do it right here. And so we're just coming here, and I like the way this blue looks, so I'm going to copy that by right-clicking and copying, and paste that there, and actually paste it here as well, and then just grab that and make that slightly darker and slightly greener, okay? And that's just going to give us a little bit of coloration, just color, like, variance in color there. And so when I come in here and plug that into color, we should be good. It should look slightly better. We're going to grab that and also plug that in right here. You can just drag it in and drop it anywhere. And we're going to plug that into subsurface and go down to color right there. Boom. So now that's the color of that. Nothing's going to happen because we don't have any weight to it. So we're going to grab our subsurface weight and crank it all the way up. Boop. Cool. Now, if you're curious uh, about my light settings, my dome light set to one. Totally fine. Didn't touch it really. And then my light, my big area light is set to 26. It's like 7,000 by 7,000 big, right? And the temperature is set to 3,200. So it's a nice orange, like sun, sunset light. And that's going to be the key to <clears throat> creating this subsurface look is you have to have light. Without light blasting through, uh, there's nothing to light up the surface, right? So make sure you keep that in mind. Uh, so what we want to do now is just adjust the color for the radius here. And that's one thing we're going to do. We're going to grab this max on noise, hold control, and copy it over. Grab that, plug that into subsurface, and that's going to be underneath the radius. All right, but this one we want to be a little lighter. So we're going to go like more of a teal, so sort of somewhere in the middle. And we'll grab this one, and we'll go a little more green and a little more like that. And I'm basing these colors really off of like Sea of Thieves and my memory of that. But that's pretty much what we're going to do. And we might need to come here and make them lighter. But what we're going to do now is um, just come in here to our subsurface and start jacking up the scale of this to like 50. And you're going to see we start getting that really just beautiful look right off the bat. And that's it. Like... Subsurface alone makes this look so good because we have that really strong, hard side light coming through just to hit those peaks of the waves. That's why it's like low. It's going to hit the edges of those waves and we're going to get that nice. And because we have that like color variance in both the subsurface and in the color surface, we get this nice kind of natural looking pocket of, of water right now. It's too white on top and so we can start to play around with the anisotropy to change that and we might just have it set up too high um so first things first we'll change this to like 30 but i like how much it's coming through over there yeah and the subsurface always takes like a little bit of time to cook um so you just gotta let it let it cook there we go but that's not bad now this is too white right so that's going to be the issue with that so we fix this with the anisotropy and I never remember which way to turn it. So we're going to gamble and we're going to turn it up. I'm going to go all the way up just so I can make sure that it's working. And when I go all the way up, I went the wrong way. So we're going to go all the way down. There we go. Up was the right way, wasn't it? We're going to go up. Yeah. So if we turn that up, we get it. We're kind of like bringing that up to the top of the water. 
which is just like it's going to look worse before it looks better. But because we're able to bring that attenuation to like the surface of of that, we're actually going to be able to lower down the scale of this. Because I want it to have that nice, cool color variance throughout it. So that is looking pretty good. I like the way that's looking. I wish it was shining through a little bit more. So again, we just kind of crank up that scale again uh, a little bit like that. And what we can do is crank that up to like 30. And that looks pretty good. Uh, but we could actually come in here and maybe take the weight of this down a little bit to like 0.6 which should make it more focused along the top there, which should look good. Yes, I like it. And then if we want to, we can actually make it kind of glass. So <laughs> we're gonna actually grab our transmission and put it just like halfway up, which I know these are weird values. Uh, and that's kind of what happens um, is you get just kind of weird Values now because we've made this a little glassy, you can see we get a lot more of our reflections coming through and stuff. But let's grab our color and turn that on our transfusion transmission color as well. That way, those colors should amplify versus um, turn white. Okay, there we go. So now we have this nice kind of like shininess going on. On top of that, we still have our subsurface, but it looks a little different, and we can grab our depth here and our scatter color. And we're gonna plug this max on noise to be used for the scatter radius of the subsurface and plug that into the transmission scatter color. And then we need to adjust the depth and we'll say something like uh, 0.6 or something and just start with that. And at this point, we're really just like fine tuning um, and playing around. So if you say like five, we can see, and this should just like start kind of amplifying that underwater color. It's kind of like transmission is like fake subsurface scattering. Um, but when you combine the two, uh, you actually can get some pretty nice, clean, pretty results. So I just want to make sure that I get that variance and that kind of glassy, watery look from this. And if you really want to, you could add some dispersion, um, but I'm not going to worry about that for this render. Um, but having those two things in there doing that it's going to give us this nice color variation um, and I like the way this is looking now we need to talk about because that looks pretty uh, I think it's a little little it's just a little too white on the very top right like I love the way it looks right there but right here where we're on this side of it it doesn't look as well we can bring our subsurface weight down and see if we can start to kind of mess with that we still have these nice peaks back here but less up here so we want it to be somewhere in between here and maybe we do like 25 so maybe we raise this up a bit more get more of that and again it's a, lot, a little bit of a guessing game here when it comes to this when tweaking it just to just to get it just right right but i i like that a lot. What if I bring the inistropy down? That should spread it out a little more, right? Yeah. Okay. And then we can maybe take the scale back up. So we get more of it coming through. And that way it's a little less bright white here. It's a little better. Maybe worse. Not bad. It's very, very cartoony in a nice way. So this is the point where we're, we're like kind of CGE, right? It's like stylized CG, but not like anime CG kind of style. So how do we take this and add that nice little white peaks across everything, right? And we could come in here and tweak this forever. And we might come back and tweak it some more here in a bit, but we'll see. Um, neat. All right, so here's what we do. We type in C and we add a curvature node. Curvature, boom. And what we can do right now is just solo this. And you'll see, because we use displacement modifiers on the plane versus through the texture, we actually are able to just grab the corners of this. And because we have two nice displacers on here, we have these really nice edges and these details that we can use. Now, 
there's no like clamping on this, but you can grab a ramp, which if you need to, you can just hit C and grab a ramp. And uh, we'll just plug that into the ramp, hit input, and that goes into alt input. So we'll solo that. And now what we have here is the ability to just clamp down this white and increase the strength of that. So boom, now we have that kind of, it's a little soft. If we want it to be uh, more just like bigger, uh, we could increase the radius all the way up to one. It's gonna give us some more of a radius. We can increase the samples, which will make it crisper. You don't go crazy with the samples. You don't really need to. It's not ever gonna look that crisp. But because we have this all in a ramp, we can really come in here and tighten this up and really make those pop a little bit more, right? Something we can't do in just the curvature node. So we have this. Now I want it to look nice and neat and it kind of looks cartoony already. So what we need to do is grab this, plug it in to our standard material and we take that into the geometry setting. No, yes, no, I lied. And we go down to the emission setting and this is where we say emission color. Now, because our one color is black, it's not going to emit anything. So we need to come in here to our material. Now I've hit cap locks or something that's got everything stuck. Okay. We go down here to the emission and we can just say one, right? And we'll unsolo this. And now boop, we have a very pretty cool anime style thing. And the reason we did the emission, right? Like why, why emission? And that's because like, regardless of the lighting, we're always going to have this white kind of show up. And that's what kind of gives it that anime type look. And we can really, you know, if we wanted to, we could clamp it up uh, even more. Uh, we could probably come in here and increase this to like maybe three. And that's going to give us even more white. There we go. A little, little fatter white on there and maybe we can come out here and uh, is it, it's not cap lock what is it that makes me make some stick when you're selecting them um but we'll go ahead and change this to like three that's really going to make those whites pop and regardless of whether they're in the shadow or not it's going to give us that nice anime style so now that we have that going maybe we can clamp it up and bring it up like that just to clamp it a little bit more and so that's going to give us just like just the edges, really just the taller peaks, which I don't like as much. So let's bring that back down and we can slide this down a bit, which is going to make them crisper. Oof, too crisp. Don't like it. Slide them back up in between those two. There we go. Something like that. And again, we might come in here and grab our max on noise for our colors and this is the one that's being plugged into our transmission and everything. We're just going to make it a little lighter, right? Like a little lighter green and a little lighter blue. And that should make our water look a little lighter uh, in those pieces where it's shining through, which I think is key to this. But there you go. So the cool part is, is because we're using the curvature node and because we're using displacer modifiers is uh, when we animate this, like we can just skip ahead in our scene here. It's going to actually, the white foam is going to stick on those peaks and stuff. So if we move, they're always going to be just on those peaks. So we have this really nice, cool water. But there you go. That's how you would do it. So the key to rendering this out and making it look extra anime is uh, to use a denoiser because the denoiser like blurs it and that just kind of makes it have this like brush kind of color. Uh, so I would do it on low with that. And if you're using a denoiser with an animation, uh, so we want to do all frames, right? So output all frames 299 again, so that when they loop it, it doesn't um, have a hiccup frame. We'll save it out wherever we want it. Uh, Ocean one, something like that. And then in the redshift settings, we'll say low, we'll say denoiser optics. If you don't have optics, use alt to single. If you don't have that as an option, um, use what you have, I guess, and maybe it won't look as good, I don't know. But then we want to go to the advanced tab and you wanna make sure the random noise pattern is off because when you use a denoiser with an animation, a lot of times you get this weird like flickering. Uh, so basically that's because the random noise pattern is on. So without that being on, um, you're not getting a different noise pattern for each frame so the denoiser doesn't have to fight that it just has to worry about 
the the noise being kind of locked in so it helps it figure that out so we have these nice reflections we could probably come in here and maybe 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 uh up the roughness a bit and maybe that'll give us a little a little neater reflection there but i'm not sure we need to do that oh that is one thing i wanted to do yes so we're almost done but i want it to be even more reflective kind of kind of and so what i want to do is because we've lost kind of that that detail that we added right the bump map detail so what i want to do is actually grab these noise and this bump copy them pull them down i don't want that and i'm going to grab that bump and plug this into the coat bump and i'm going to come in here and i'm going to go down and i'm going to go to the coat and i'm going to turn a coat layer on like 0.7 ish crank that up a little bit on the roughness and up the IOR of it, which is going to give it kind of a nice shine across it. And we're going to take this uh, bump that we used for the waves and just change the seed. And that's just going to give us a different layer of waves. So not all, not all of our noise is going to look the same. So we kind of have two layers of bump overlapping with that with very little effort. And that's just going to give us that little extra bit of shiny water to work with. And maybe we come back in here and clamp this back down again just to make that white pop a little bit more too much somewhere in between we'll figure it out it's just a small little slider there we go so there you go that that's it so now you know you hit render you animate it out uh if you want what i like to do is I, i'll save a project and then i'll like when i get to the end i'll, I'll come to another camera angle um if you wanted to we could add that camera but maybe I'll do something like a long lens, like a 150, and kind of come at it um, from a different angle. Maybe like that. I know it's hard to tell what I'm seeing here, but there we go. And we could come in here and go to the optical and do a focus distance of like right there and turn on bokeh, but make it like a really low aperture. So now we have this kind of like macro shot of the ocean waves. It's just cool, right? It's neat. I was very happy with it. I didn't set out to make this, but... Uh, it was really fun to make. Hopefully you enjoyed making it as well and my little tangents and stuff. But uh, the fact that it has kind of those nice real world reflections from the dome light and the lighting. And uh, that, that's part of what makes it so neat is we could come in here and, uh, you know, if we wanted to make it nighttime, maybe we could change our dome light to like purple. Lower it down a bit and grab our aerial light and maybe make it a little cooler like um, 5600. Now we have, you know, just a different vibe on this. It's more of a stormy, stormy seas. Uh, and we can grab our light and we've got it set up with a target uh, right in the middle. So we're always pointing at it. So we can grab our light, it makes it easier to move around. And there's our camera. So let's go ahead and if we pull it this way. It'll change, you know, the way the light's coming through and we can make it hit those peaks a little better if we want to. Pretty cool, right? So we can get different styles and looks from it very quickly and easily. Go back to our first camera setup. <coughs> and that might be more of what you want to kind of like this purple light. But obviously uh, now our big old area light is a little too bright. So we'll turn that down and maybe, maybe we'll make it even warmer, like 6,800. And if you really wanted to, you could throw in some uh, environment uh, which is going to make it look a little less anime, but now you're starting to combine a bunch of things and really I should just ramp up the tutorial, but uh, I like playing around with this stuff. So real quick with this, we'll take our dome light, make sure it's not contributing to the volume, go to our area light and make sure it's barely contributing. And then in our environment, we can lower that scatter down and we can really just start messing with the attenuation and give it more of a, like a dark purpley blue. And that'll make it more like a like a nighttime scene. We can scale up our height so we still have that back there. And we can start playing with the attenuation to kind of make it push back a little further to add that depth. And we'll say like a purple for that as well. Maybe an orange though. Maybe an orange would be nice to con contrast the, yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, but now we're starting to get kind of weird looking. 
But uh, so yeah, undo all that. But yeah, that's the kind of stuff I like to do at the end of the project. Just a little tip that, uh, you know, when the tutorial is over or whatever, when you're learning, um, save save a version of it. Save it incremental. Increment, do this. Save incrementally. And then play around with it. Mess with it. See what breaks it. See what makes it look good. You might discover a happy little accident like I did in creating this in the first place. Uh, but yeah, we can come back in here, obviously fix this, change the lights. I actually tried, uh, I played around with, um, oops, uh, anime backgrounds and stuff as well. Uh, there's a really cool website I want to tell you before we uh, sign off. We'll grab our, um, I just like, I like angling it so that I have like almost the full screen of waves. I just think it's satisfying to look at. So we could do, what's this camera that I'm looking through? 24? Yeah. So we can zoom out a bit. You could get close to it if you want. So you can have like multiple renders of this and they're always gonna loop so you can cut them together. Uh, you can see you kind of have these nice cool little peaks going through. There we go. So, you know, you just kind of, I like the like the three quarter height. I think it looks nice. Uh, I played around with the backgrounds. That's what I was gonna say is there's a really cool site. Uh, if you get on here, I have it bookmarked. It's called Skybox Lab. And it's a free AI thing, free, of course, because they limit a bunch of stuff. Don't show me this ever again. Um, and basically, it makes 360 AI sky maps. So you can sign in, you get 15 credits if you want, and uh, you have different styles. I think that's what's so cool about it. So we'll just say, like, cloudy sky over the ocean. I suck at um, prompts. If you ever want to get good at prompts, uh, just go to ChatGPT and ask it to make you text prompts. It actually works really well. Uh, so we're gonna do that. We're gonna say select, and we're gonna go to illustrative, which is a new feature, and we're gonna choose anime, right? Maybe we'll do that. And that's gonna go ahead and create an anime 360 map, which if you look here, you can see it's actually a full 360 map. So it's just gonna create it. We're gonna be able to look around it and stuff, and then we can download it and throw it in our scene which is pretty cool. So obviously if you sign up for like the pro membership, you get higher res, you get more variations, you get more downloads a day, whatever. But there we go. So now we kind of have this anime scene. It created a, a islands, a landscape. Eh, I don't know. We can download it, right? We can download that. You can share it with people, whatever. And there's doing a 3D mesh creator. Also, uh, let's say anime, sure. And we'll just grab that we'll go to downloads we'll go to our dome light real quick open that back up grab that anime boom okay and we'll see what that looks like it's not not great not bad right uh we'll take it and we'll rotate it around so I want kind of more of those cloudy skies, and I want that horizon line to be kind of up there. So we're going to tilt it up this way and rotate it around. But you can see it, like that's kind of cool, right? I don't know. Up to you. Play around with that. Uh, but they have all kinds of styles and stuff, which is pretty cool. So check that out. Um, but yeah, there you go. Enjoy that animation. Super peaceful. If you do share it and make a loop. Let me know. Hopefully you had fun. Hopefully it brings some some joy to your day. Uh, if you like this kind of stuff, like and subscribe. Helps out a lot. Leave a comment. Thank you all. Check out the Mind Emotion Workshop. Check out all my stuff for sale. Check out my website. See ya.